You recognize this vinyl community on YouTube? This is Dick Hun, the same place as I filmed my videos when I uh, painted up my goals for 2017. Hello, the vinyl community. I'm here at uh, a lake called Stick Hun. This is how it looks like now when the spring finally has sprung. Yeah, that is correct. Spring is finally here. Uh, we have about 16 degrees uh, and uh, it is uh, nice sunny and calm spring evening. And I've decided to take a walk around this lake uh, while also making a thread, a contest even, a contest response. Uh, I got inspired. This is not a complete rip-off, but I admit I have, I have been inspired by the great Robert Z when he did his response for Captain Howdy uh, walking in the desert. Uh, we don't have a desert here in Sweden, but I can walk around this lake answering your questions. Hello there, Vinyl Collector James. This is a response uh, for your contest. Uh, congratulations to your 3,000 subscribers. But congratulations, you're worth every one of them. Uh, you have a great channel, you have a great knowledge about electronic music. Uh, I know that our musical taste has, is uh, similar to many points, uh, so it was natural that I wanted to do a response for this. Uh, and I felt like I want to do something special. So here I am walking around this lake trying to do a response for your question. Now when it's finally is warm outside. Uh, the first question that you had was uh, our biggest missing grail. Uh, the record that was highest on our wish list. Uh, those who have followed my channels knows by now which, which one these are. But if you're gonna pick one of them, I'm picking Carol King's Tapestry. Uh, I have a feeling that it will come during this year. Uh, but uh, I really want that album. Uh, as I'm trying to get as much uh, of the 70s Carol King as possible. Uh, and that one, of course, is her biggest. And... Re really, really something that I feel like I really must have. Uh, especially since I've heard some of the songs that are, uh, is on his album and I really, really love them. So, Carol King's Tapestry is my, should I say, one of my biggest grails at this moment. Hello! Anybody home in there? Knock, knock! Look how beautiful this is actually. When the sun about to go down on the trees and two lonely birds swimming out there. Nice spring evening here. Imagine how this would look like when it's July and, and full summer. Second question James was uh, which album we would take to a desert island. Uh, that question has been uh, around a few times and it's always as hard is always just as hard. Uh, it means that it's one record that we had to listen to over and over. Uh, and of course, I have my favorites. I could pick the Alpha Veil vale for every young. Uh, but I think that the album that I uh, wanted is the one that I still considered my absolute favorite record. Uh, and that is Susanna Hoff's When You Were a Boy from 1901. Susanna Hoff's of Bangles. And uh, this is just an, such an amazing pop pearl, uh, amazing produced by David Kane, and uh, uh, her beautiful voice and 
also uh, I feel like if I'm going to stay on a desert island for a while I could use some something beautiful to look at and uh, Susanna is one of the most beautiful women alive could also have picked another one that would be maybe more uh, to my help and that is Beatles song help if I play that on highest volume over the island maybe a boat could hear that and hear the words help and come rescue me who knows uh, third question road trip uh, album which was very very tough because I'm when, when I'm going out on uh, uh, if I'm going out uh, on a trip uh, for, for a long trip like when I'm train riding to Stockholm uh, I, I always I don't have any specific that I'm uh, artists that I listen to. Uh, I like to uh, change from time to time uh, because I have so, so many different kind of uh, music styles that I like. Uh, so uh, that one was very tough, but I feel like uh, perfect road music for me. I have actually opened my mind that I picked out two records. Uh, I have one. Uh, honorable mention that I feel would be great and that is uh, America Hideaway uh, feel like some uh, West Coast sing-songwriter style would be perfect uh, when you're riding on the road and it's uh, in the summertime and the Sun is shining and uh, this uh, you see the landscape this would be actually perfect but I think my main answer would be something that I also more <laughs> think is perfect. That is some great good old new wave pop from the 80s, British new wave pop. And w why not? What is better than China Crisis working with Fire and Steel from 83? Uh, this is a fantastic great album with uh, Hannah Hannah and you have Wishful Thinking, Tragedy and Mystery. Uh, really relaxing, calm, suitable when you're riding uh, on a road trip around the landscape. Really, really fantastic and uh, I think it would be perfect uh, for that moment. Fourth question was an album uh, or an artist, should I say an artist, that uh, people don't expect to see in my collection. Uh, that one was also pretty tough because uh, people who know me uh, might th uh, think that it's pretty impossible to find something unexpected in a collection that contains everything from uh, poetry songs to, com to uh, spoken records to Euro disco to classical music to jazz to uh, pop hits from, from the 90s and the 80s, uh, 80s synth pop, everything and everything between uh, and Brit pop and, and uh, uh, big beat music uh, between that so, so it's hard for people to think that uh, that uh, there are something that is unexpected in my collection but I think I have two artists that uh, some might raise an eyebrow uh, first of all Take that. Uh, this is a compilation, greatest hits. Uh, I don't like boy bands at all. I said it before. Uh, I think Backstreet Boys and Westlife and uh, and Sync and Five and all these kind of bands is horribly boring. Uh, I turn it off when I hear it because it goes in here and out here and it's uh, it's uh, definitely boring. But take that is. Uh, it is uh, something different because they mix uh, soul and dance music in their production and uh, a lot of 70s soul and disco style that I like very much and they have melodies that uh, is way I'm not going to say that everything they do is, is good I think their ballads is uh, pretty boring but uh, much stuff that Take That has done is really really good uh, very well produced and really funky actually so, so uh, Take That is one uh, artist that I don't think people would expect in my collection. And the other one, hold on to your seats, is actually Britney Spears. Uh, at least the first uh, 
the first three, two, three albums. Uh, the, after that, it became a little too much hip hop and house and so on for me. So I, I really don't care for that. But her, her two first two, three albums that was produced by the uh, Swedish Sharon uh, Max Martin uh, uh, stable was actually really good pop music that I really liked actually well made melodies good produced and uh, that I really uh, fell for I'm a little bit weak for girl pop so, so what can I say so I think that you'd be pretty surprised to find that compilation in my collection but as I said um, the two first two or three albums and Britney Spears get not my But as I said, maybe the first two, three albums. Uh, but uh, after that, she, uh, Britney Spears became not my kind of music. But the first two, three albums uh, made by the Sharon Studio was actually really, really, uh, really, really good. Well, pop music, I think. Look at these beautiful flowers. A sign that we're going to through to. Brighter seasons. Uh, an artist whose lyrics I can relate to uh, it was tough, uh, especially since I'm listening to so much, many other stuff when I'm uh, uh, listening to music. I listen to lyrics, I listen to production, I listen to melodies, voice, everything, so on. But, but uh, this one artist who's uh, a lot of Swedish artists whose lyrics I really really like but but uh, one Swedish artist that I enjoy very very much uh, and that uh, uh, I'm not going to say relate maybe but uh, I, I am huge fan of his lyrics uh, and that is Swedish uh, singer Peter Lemark <coughs> he's been around since uh, the beginning of the 80s uh, and uh, he is in a uh, I say sing-songwriter style uh, from Sweden, singing in Swedish mainly, uh, and uh, I just love his lyrics because they're so uh, intimate and they're personal and uh, they're so well described, uh, very painting, p uh, painted lyrics uh, that I really, really like, and uh, some of these I also can relate to. to. Uh, he has done some much marvelous songs, um, sings when he, you can f really feel what he's feeling, happiness, sorrow, everything when, when he's when he's singing, and then it's because the lyrics are so well described. Uh, I picked out this. This is uh, "Welcome and Hem, Welcome Home" from 1990, uh, together with fantastic production with his. Uh, the, the one he, who produced him for many years, Tony Torian from the group El Kwan. Uh So many great lyrics, uh, especially a song from his latest album, uh, the title track, Den Tunna Tråden, The Thin Line, uh, where he really thing, uh, sings passion, passionately about his feelings when his wife uh, got cancer. Uh, and. Uh, Really, 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 really touching and uh, personal song. Uh, fantastic, marvelous song, and uh, really, really touching and great love songs also. So I really, really admire his lyrics and his voice and his music uh, overall. But most of all, his fantastic lyrics. So Pieter Lamarck is my 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 answer there. Take a look at this. Beautiful, isn't it? Now it's time to to uh, go back home, I think, uh, and uh, hopefully I'll be back soon. I hope that you have enjoyed my response outdoors, James, <laughs> uh, and uh, that you have a whole lot of more subscribers. Uh, it's always good to see your movies. Uh, uh, I hope that you and everybody else have a really nice time, no matter where you are, no matter what you do. Take care, everybody, and so long.